Hello anatomy students, this is Dr. Rollis. In this short video, we're going to review the type of tissue found in the epidermis and the role of the keratin proteins that are found inside of it in giving that layer some of its strength. Remember from our previous video that the epidermis is made of a type of skin called keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. As we always already broke down, that word stratified means that there's more than one layer of cells. In places in your body that have thick skin, so places like the palms of your hands or the soles of your feet, we can have as many as 50 layers of cells in that area. In places of your body where we have thin skin, like your eyelids, for example, we may only have five to 10 layers of cells. So we can have a lot of different layers of cells but in keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, there's always more than one layer of cells. When we talk about keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, we organize those layers of cells into things called strata. So most of your skin, all of the places that have thin skin, have cells organized into four different strata starting superficially or on the outside of your body we have stratum corneum below stratum corneum is the layer that's dark with spots called stratum granulosum below that is a layer called stratum spinosum where the cells have little spines attaching them to each other finally we have a single row of cells at the very bottom called stratum basal these four strata are found in both thin skin and thick skin, but when we talk about thick skin, which again is on the palms of your hands or the soles of your feet, we have an extra stratum. That stratum is called stratum lucidum. Stratum lucidum is a clear layer of cells. It's wedged in between stratum granulosum and stratum corneum. Any of the cells that we see in the epidermis are what we call keratinocytes. Keratinocytes are cells that are full of the protein keratin. I know that these cells are full of keratin because of their name, keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. The farther and farther these cells get from stratum basal, because they're just growing and pushing themselves up, the farther we get away from stratum basal, the more keratin that we have present. Keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. That is a description of the layers of cells that we have and how much keratin they have inside of them. Let's talk a little bit more about this keratin protein. Keratin is a protein that when I look at its secondary structure, I can see a whole lot of alpha helices. Remember from our previous lesson that alpha helices are those curly Q ribbons that make up the secondary structure of proteins. When I look at these curly Q ribbons that make up keratin secondary structure, notice that we have this red stripe right here. This red stripe is hydrophobic amino acids. So all along this curly Q, we have a, st a stripe of amino acids that don't play nice with water, that don't like to be around water. So what ends up happening are those alpha helices wrap around one another, building a tertiary structure for this protein that looks a lot like a Twizzler. The reason I form this tertiary structure is because of these hydrophobic amino acids. We have those things called hydrophobic attractions. This red line doesn't like water and this red line doesn't like it either. If they wrap around each other and they stay close to one another, there'll be no water in the places that we don't want it. So one of the ways that the keratin protein stays put together is because of these things called hydrophobic attractions that line of hydrophobic amino acids squeezing together. The other way that keratin proteins keep their shape 
and their structure is because of things called disulfide bonds. Disulfide bonds are one example of what we call a nonpolar covalent bond. A disulfide bond exists between two sulfurs in different amino acids. Because they're both sulfurs, they have the same electronegativity. So when they connect with one another and they share electrons, they share those electrons equally. That's what a nonpolar covalent bond is, electrons being shared equally. The fact that I build my keratin proteins using these bonds that share equally these disulfide bonds, this tells me that the keratin protein is a very strong protein. Or in other words, it's going to be very hard to denature keratin because it's attached together with these nonpolar covalent bonds. So as we continue our discussion, of some of the things cells use keratin for, keep in mind that keratin is a very strong protein because of its nonpolar covalent bonds.